Hi guys, welcome to the shop. I'm Mike. Today we're going to make a new tool for winding wire and tightening it around a pipe, a handle, a piece of hose. I use them all the time on my airlines. The product is far superior to a hose clamp and we'll never have to buy a hose clamp again. So what we're going to do is we start with a piece of 12mm stainless steel. So I'm going to face the end off and then I'll drill a 6mm hole which will go 75 mils deep into the, into the stainless steel rod. Okay, so I'll centre drill first. Put our six mil bit in. Right, we'll do a nice little countersink in the end of that, and then we can turn it around and stick a taper on it. Beautiful. I also want to bring it down to size. So I've got 125 and I want to bring it down to 115. So I'll take 10 mil off before I put the taper on it. I'll now set my compound to 5 degrees so this angle is not critical at all it's so that the end tapers down where we're going to get close to the wire I want about, once, and I mean it's only about 4mm flat left on the end. Another half a mil. We've got a good finish on that. So that's the lathe work done for now. Um, we're going to take it over to the mill and we'll put a slot in it. Okay, just so you get an idea of what I'm going to do here. So at 10 mil and along here at this one, I'm just over, so I'm going to do a 50 mil cut on this one. And down the center. So I'll drill a three and a half mil hole here and a three and a half mil hole here, and then I'm going to mill out four mil. Okay, so I'm going to move my drill in to 10. This is the end of my slot. And since I'm going to be doing a 4mm cut, I'll bring it in another 2, 12. So that's half my cutter. So that my, the, end, the outside edge of my cutter 
will be ten mil from the end. Right, that's our first spot, and now, now we'll go along to our 50 mil mark. We'll actually do 60 because it's 10 plus 50. We'll go on to 60. And then remember we've got a 4 mil cutter, so we've got to go back 2 to allow half the cutter to come to the edge of our hole. So I'll go back to 58. And I'll put another centre drill there. So while I'm here, I'll put my, I'm going to put a three and a half mil drill through, just to give Okay, so I'm going to cut off. I'll zero my Z. And I know I've got to go at least 12 to get through until I hit my packing material underneath. There we go, we're actually 13. Now we'll head back along. And we'll go to our 12 millimetre mark. So I'm going to zero out my X axis and then just as my cutter touches I'll zero out the Z and I know 12 I will be through, right on through. So I'll take another 0.25. So this is for a little pin to go through there. Oh, 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 oh. It's skewed sideways in the hole, so I'll just stop for a minute. So where my drill bit slipped, I hadn't actually gone deep enough with the centre drill. So I'm just going a bit deeper with that now. And hopefully, the hole will be won't be that big, but at least it will centralise it back up again. Yeah, I've had to over drill that because that drill, at least it will go in there now. There we go.
Right, that's the chamfering on both sides done. This is how far we've got. Tapered it, slotted it, drilled it, and that drill hole, I don't know if you can actually see. Yeah, brother, you can just see it inside there. And that's how I want it, so that the internal piece doesn't flop out. Alright, I'm going to call it quits for the evening and we'll finish that off in the morning. We're going to now make the handle. The handle is going to be a butterfly type handle. So I'm going to face this off and then put a 5 degree taper running back in towards the centre piece. Then I'll flip it and do the other end. And now we will cut our taper up to that We've got 0.4 point. We'll head over to the mill now. We're going to drill and tap a six more hole in here. And then we're pretty well done. We can... So I'm going to finish the tapping off by hand. I just started it so it's nice and straight in the mill. And I'll put a little chamfer on the holes. Oop. And then that's done. Feels like it. So now we'll go and cut a bit of threaded rod and drill a hole to put a pin through and then we're pretty well done apart from assembly. So I'm going to use this pin because I want the groove that I'm going to file to be on the same angle as that pin. So I'm just eyeing down onto that pin. But I'm going to just turn it that way. Then I'm going with the vice instead of against it. That'll do. Assembly time. So we've got the main body we made on the lathe. We've got a piece of threaded rod with a hole in it. We've got a pit, two pins. One for the threaded rod. One for the end of the main body. We've got a handle. We've got a dome nut and a washer. And I'm going to lock tight. So, I'm going to slide that in there. Let's wide it. I'm going to use a block of wood for this. So, this pin is 45, just over 45 mils long. I will put a little drop of Loctite in there. Do it. I'll tap that in there. There we go. So I'm going to tap that through and I will measure even. Twenty and a half. Nineteen and a half. Oh, half a mil. Twenty. Twenty. Okay. So we've got that that first piece in. Then we put our washer on, thread on our main handle, and 
and then our doom nut on top of that. A little bit of Loctite on that as well. I don't want that to come loose. Bit of huffing and puffing going on. Here. Okay. Now we will tap this last pin in. That will go through there. Like I said, I've actually had to sand that as a slight taper because I was having trouble getting it to go in. Put some Loctite on there. So this is the finished product, I'll now just get some wire and we'll do a test and I'll show you how it replaces any cl hose clamp and any size hose clamp. This thing is great, um, I use it all the time. Anyways, I'll go get some wire and set up so you can see it working. So this is the difference you'll get by using this tool. This is just this is a hose clamp, brand new one, stainless steel I've done up. And this is the wire tie that the tool does. So this is thin, this is, I can run my hand in the eye as you can see this is bulky. Another reason why this is so good compared to a hose clamp, and this hose clamp is done up, I will still be able to slip on every hose, there you go, I've just pushed that wire through under the hose clamp. So hose clamps don't go right around tight because of how they pull into this locking mechanism there's always going to be a little area where it doesn't get clamped with this wire tie as you can see it completely because we have a complete circle it pulls down tight right around you can see it pull in I've never had one of these leak. I use these all the time for my airlines never had one of these leak I've had these leak all the time I've replaced these with these once I made my tool, um, which is a really old scungy version of what I got there. So let's do one and I'll show you how it works. This is one point, say 1.2. This is, that, that's the one I use the most. And then there's this thinner one, which I cut a piece off before. That's 0.7. I'm just going to slip a bolt in it like that. So then you cut a piece of wire off your, so the rule of thumb, we're working at, so that's about 15, whatever your diameter is, times it by 13, plus 200. So I need about 400 mil. It's... See what I guesstimated. I guess made it 500. Okay, I'm going to take my wire and bend it in half into a loop. Then I'm going to put my wire, take the two ends and feed it through the loop and pull it up. And then I'm going to go around again, and in the, I'm going to go between these ones this time. Go around and back through the loop. You can do them singly, it's just as easy. And we want our wires to continue in straight lines and not cross over. I'm going to open these up. Then I'm going to take my tool, I'm going to place it under the loop. I'm not going to put the end on the loop yet. I'm going to go under the loop. Then I'm going to go over these pins. These pins are to push it down when you push it around. 
So you need to make sure that you're over and then you wrap it around this pin which is on your threaded rod which is going to tension it a couple of times and then I just put it in the middle and give it a twist up. Now at this stage you give it a pull and you put your end the notch onto the wire. And now we start winding up our handle. When you get a little bit of tension, go around, well you don't have to, and tidy up your loops. It just looks nicer. And then pull it up tight. Keep winding. You'll feel it tension. You can actually see the wires pull in to the hose. This is the airline I'm using here. Wind it up. The plus it. Keep on winding. That is pretty well smooth with the hose. It's pulled well in there. So now you bend it over. Cut your wires off. Cut them anywhere at this stage because we're going to tie. Now we cut them shorter. I'll even cut that one a bit shorter. And get your pliers and bend them in and try to get them to go in into the gap. Give them a good. So now we have this. I can rub my hand over it and it doesn't catch. So we've got a beautiful wire tie. And as you can see, it's pulled in all the way around. It's nice and tight. That won't leak. Have a go at making one yourself. It's a really good tool in the workshop. If you want me to put up a drawing, I'm quite happy to do that. Let me know in the comments. I realise not everyone has a lathe and a milling machine to make one like this. Make it as pretty as that. So next week I'm going to take a turnbuckle and a wing nut and I'm going to turn that into a similar tool. It won't look as good, but it will do a similar job. So come along and have a look at that. Thanks for coming along. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. And we will see you on the next one.